In this scenario, we're actually going to illustrate how to do a basic orbit maneuver, which is done through what's called delta Vs. This is where the spacecraft flies along, kind of temporarily stop the simulation to take the current position, change the velocity, like you've changed the inclination or you sped up the velocity, and then we continue the simulation to illustrate, yep, we went from a circular orbit to an elliptic orbit, or we did a plane change or something like that. So how do we do this in basilisk? This is a pretty common astrodynamics simulation scenario. The example here, scenario orbit maneuver, contains a script that shows you how to do this. Essentially, it is based on scenario basic orbit, which has a single spacecraft orbiting the Earth, and we run a simulation. This will look very similar. But what's the difference going to be is at the end of that simulation, we're going to pull the latest state, change them, and then put them back into the spacecraft states. So I'm going to show you how to access the state engine that's baked into our basilisk dynamics and change the velocity and then let it run again. And how do we get there? So if we do one of these scripts, if we run it, you will see this goes pretty quickly. And here it did a low Earth orbit, showing the radius. Then it does a home wind transfer. So it switches to an elliptic orbit where we swing out, radius gets larger, larger, asymptotically approaches this circular orbit where we do a second burn, second delta V. And uh, that's where we now have a circular final orbit. Um, I close both of those. That's the scenario we're going to look at. So in the Python file inside the examples folder, scenario orbit maneuver, we're going to go straight to the run environment. The includes actually look very similar. I think they're pretty much the same as scenario basic orbit. So nothing new to discuss there. So at the beginning, we create our basilisk framework, which is a simulation base class. We create a single process. We then, so here we create a single process. We create a single task that we add to that process and as before, we're going to run it with 10 second time steps here. The rest of the code looks virtually identical with what you would have with um, scenario basic orbit, except that we don't have the Mars option. It's only Earth. So we create here an instance of the basilisk module for a spacecraft. We give it a model, a tag. We're going to add it to the task. So this, uh, this dynamics will be integrated at 10 second time steps. We create an instance of the gravity factory class to assist us. Then we make the earth, make sure it's central body. And if you remember central body means when we set initial position velocity, it will be with respect to the earth. Then we attach the gravity to the spacecraft. So you can see this should be boring by now because this is exactly like scenario basic orbit. The rest of it is we setting up our orbits. Here we're always starting out with a circular orbit. In all the cases, we compute an orbit period so we can run for one quarter period. We set up recorders to record about 100 data points of the spacecraft states for plotting. That's those are the plots that you saw at the end. This part slightly different. Um, I like to show this orbit where you can see not only the osculating lines, which is kind of the default in Vizard, but also show the true orbit lines. The true one is the actual trajectory. So osculating at the beginning will show a circle because we're in a circular directory. Then we go on ellipse. It's going to show us being on an ellipse, but it doesn't show the circle anymore. The true directory shows the path along the circle, then the ellipse, then the final circle again, as an example. So I want to show that in Vizard, and I want to specify the colors. That's why these extra arguments are provided, where we're giving it uh, the osculating orbit color list. We only have one spacecraft, so the list will only contain one color element. And for yellow, and we've chosen to make a true orbit line turquoise because why not? And um, also, we've changed the main camera target. By default, Wizard starts up looking at the spacecraft in a very local view, but we want to be zoomed out and look at the Earth so we can see the entire orbit. And uh, the true trajectory isn't on by default, but here we're turning it on. So you can see how we can change some settings for the Wizard playback. If you wanted to record this, don't forget to uncomment this line. Otherwise, it won't. It will run the interface code, but it doesn't actually save off the data. Okay, so pretty similar. Now, what's next? We initialize the simulation. This runs all the constructors, all the self units. It runs resets on all the modules. This gets the simulation up and running, all clean, ready to go. Before we run, 
we're actually going to get two handles here. Inside the spacecraft object, when it integrates the equations of motion, we have a net dynamics engine baked into Basilisk that tracks what states for what spacecraft. Because the spacecraft may have six degrees of freedom, or it may have way more if it has four wheels, either balanced or imbalanced, some panels, some fuel slush particles. There's lots of states it may have to integrate. So we can pull the position of the hub, it's called hub position, and the velo inertial velocity of the hub. The hub is the rigid part of the spacecraft, so not the panels, not the wheels, those kind of things. So we can get that object back that's from the state engine. So that's the position reference and the velocity reference. We will use these then later on to dig into the state engine and, and pull out the position velocity and actually set the position velocity as well. So that's the key difference in this script. Now we've configured the stop time, we execute, that means we run on for a quarter of an orbit, and now we have to do a maneuver. So before we do the maneuver, we need to compute what the mu delta V is. So here you can see on the position reference, I'm calling the get state method, and this will return, um, actually it's, a, it's an eigen vector inside C code. So that's why we have this handy method in Python to convert an eigenvector 3D to a NumPy array. So it returns an eigenvector, turns it in this method, turns it into a NumPy. And so now we have a standard three by one NumPy array that we can manipulate and do math on. Same for the velocity vector. These are our current position velocity after a quarter of an orbit. That's where we stopped running. Depending on the maneuver, if we're doing a Hohmann transfer, you can see what would have to happen here. We compute the next velocity that we should be having. And uh, we also compute the maneuver time, how long we have to run. And so that's all just standard astrodynamics. If you're doing an inclination change, we have some other elements here. We're going to run for another quarter orbit. But for the Hohmann transfer, we have to run for a very particular amount of time, half of the elliptic orbit period. and um, so that's all set here. Now, computing the velocity is one thing. This is the final answer that we needed. We need to actually now reach back into the spacecraft and replace the current velocity with this new velocity. This is how we're going to apply a delta V. So we do the process in reverse on the velocity reference. There's, besides a get state, there's also a set state. And we have to provide it a NumPy array, sorry, an icon vector, and we have a NumPy array. So I need this support function that is a NumPy to eigenvector XD. That's a general eigenvector. Um, so it will convert that for us and set it into the spacecraft states. So now at this instant, we've just instantaneously changed the velocity of the spacecraft. Now we need to run again on a Hohmann transfer. You'd be swinging out for a while. So we computed, we have to fly for T2 time. So we notice here, we set the stop time not to T2, but this, we have to set the absolute simulation time. So we've already run here a quarter of an orbit. Now we, of the cir initial circular orbit, now we have to run T2, which is half the elliptic transfer orbit period. And that should reach and touch the geo sat, um, orbit regime. Then we execute, that runs that part. And now we have to, and now we're gonna do another maneuver and so we get the same thing, same code over. We get the current position velocity out of the state engine. We're doing a Hohmann transfer. I compute what the new velocity should be. So what's the delta V between you know, your apoapsis of the ellipse and the, your target orbit, which is a circuit orbit at geo. So it figures out how much you're gonna have to actually accelerate to stay up there. Um, and then I set that velocity and T3, Somewhere I set T3, oh, there we go. It's gonna be another quarter of the orbit of the geo orbit, so the high altitude orbit. So then I set the total simulation time to be the initial quarter orbit of the LEO orbit, half the elliptic transfer orbit period, and then another quarter orbit period of the geo circular orbit. And then I run, sorry, whoa, there we go. Now I run it. And that's it. So I did two start and stops in this simulation to do two distinct delta V maneuvers. The rest of it is pretty straightforward. You pull your, your data from your data recorder that we set up, and then you can use Python to do all the plotting. And that's how we go here. So anyway, so this example, what did we show? The key new element here is that you can do delta Vs, but you will have to actually stop the sim 
apply that delta V. And we do it by reaching into the state engine, pulling the current states. And then these are the key lines here where at the end we have to do a set state where we reach back into that engine and push a new velocity measure before continuing the simulation. If you're gonna go ahead and load up the resulting visualization and this scenario for the orbit maneuver, I'm gonna illustrate here quickly what it looks like in Wizard. You can see here the earth. I can turn on and off the labels, but let me turn them off actually in this case. So you can see the spacecraft here. And uh, what we're gonna have is the yellow line we said was the oscillating orbit. So we're gonna start out when we run this being on the circular Leo orbit. The turquoise is the complete path. So if I zoom out, you will see it's actually going to go get on this elliptic transfer orbit, then reach the geosynchronous orbit, and then get back on a circular orbit at that point. So the, the turquoise is the entire trajectory that we can see at once. So that's why I turned that on in that thing. So now I can go ahead and I can play this. I'm going to just slow it down a smidgen. Here we did our first delta V where we start and stop the simulation. In the playback, there's no hiccup. It just, it's not a data point. And you can see it's swinging out towards apoapsis. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So the osculating orbit right now went from a circle to an ellipse. Of course, towards apoapsis, we do slow down quite a bit. And um, in a moment, we will reach apoapsis. That's where we stopped the simulation a second time, pulled the position velocity, computed what now my circular velocity speed should be, set it. And you will see the yellow line jump from an ellipse to a circle here in a moment. It's going to be just about there. And voila. So this is where it's nice to see your current oscillating orbit and the actual full you know, mission trajectory all at the same time. Kind of is a nice visualization. Hope you enjoyed that.